Hi and welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman and today I'm going to be talking to you about our part two of my spring 2024 mystery quilt class and it is Dutchman's Crossing. As you can see I have the center of the quilt put together. There's black A in the outer corners and in the middle and then black B's which we're working on this week are the other four blacks that you see. What a fast and fun quilt center to put together. I don't think I have done such a fast and simple mystery quilt center in a long time. Don't forget to go below in the description box and pull the PDF, uh, which has all of the instructions, the supply list, everything that you'll need. In fact, every one of the mystery quilt classes, and there will be four of them for spring of 2024, they'll each have a, a PDF included in the description box that corresponds to that video. So you'll be able to uh, work along with it. Doesn't matter what year it might be, these are permanent videos. They'll always be out on my YouTube channel and you can make this quilt at any time. But the PDF includes the information of supplies, the Zoom link on Monday nights. It also has the blocks that we're gonna be working on. And this week, we're working on Block B, which is this very similar to Block A. And I'll share that with you in a minute. And then it shows you how we're going to put the block together. And then for the queen size quilt, we have two different patterns we're using. The, the queen size and the wall size pattern looks the same in the center. However, the queen size quilt will incorporate that dark black border around the outer edges there at this point. The wall size quilt, if that's what you're making, will not have that dark border at this point. Next week, um, after we've finished putting the, our quilts together up to this point, I'm gonna be giving you the information in the PDF on the pieced borders. And for the queen size quilt and for the wall size quilt, there are pieced borders that we're gonna be doing. They're both beautiful. I know you're gonna enjoy them. But just remember, if you're making the queen size quilt, which is 90 by 90, do be sure to add those dark, a one and a half inch wide strips all the way around your quilt center so that it's ready for its borders. If you're making the wall size quilt, which looks identical to this, the only difference is that it will not include those dark borders. Your uh, borders are going to be a little bit different, but it'll be a lot of fun. I promise you that. So now let's go to the tabletop and see how to put block B together. So as you know, for this particular quilt, I have chosen fabrics from my stash. Um, these are just fabrics that I had. They were chunks of fabric. Um, some of them were yardage. Some of them weren't even complete yards, but I just pulled chunks to make this quilt. And I did that based upon this photo. This is a photo that's in my granddaughter's room when she stays here in our guest room. Um, this is a, She loves these horses, and this is one of the photos in there. And this is Dutchman, and then there's also Duchess. And so the name of this quilt is Dutchman's Crossing because of the beautiful crossing pattern. So this is what I pulled based upon this photo, and that's how I've put together my quilt. So I did block A, which you saw behind me on the wall. And here's a scrappy version of block A. Block A required six and a half inch squares. And then these nine patch units um, result, they became six and a half inch squares before we put them into the block. And um, this is just pulling scraps from my stash. If your plan is just to use up the scraps that you have in your stash, that is a wonderful plan for this quilt. It will be a beautiful quilt. So I just wanted you to see what it can look like from just pulling scraps from your stash. I've pulled two and a half inch squares for all of my nine patches in the lights, mediums, and darks. And then I pulled mediums for these six and a half inch squares. This is block A. There's five nine patches, four six and a half inch squares in block A. Block B is very much the same. We're only gonna create one nine patch in the unit. It will be in the center. And then I have pulled mediums. These are medium number ones or the green. And mine is more of a taupey green. And then these are the lights uh, for the corners. And these are all six and a half inch squares. And then this unit, of course, will uh, be squared up to six and a half inches before we put it into the block. So that is it. We're simply going to create the nine patch with the two and a half inch squares. We have four darks. I have a medium number one, which is the green in the center. And these are my lights for my uh, quilt. So I'm going to put this nine patch together, get it pressed and squared up to six and a half inches. Then I'm going to simply 
sew the three rows together in the nine patch unit. It is so fast and easy. I'm gonna make four of these. And in your PDF, it tells you everything you need to either pull from your stash or cut from your yardage, depending on what you're doing. And it shows you how to lay that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my nine patch together and then I'm gonna sew the block together. And I'll show you what it looks like here in just a minute. I've completed my nine patch. I have simply pressed to the dark and then the last two seams I pressed away from the center. And so it is done. And then I used my six and a half inch Omni Grid ruler and I squared it up to six and a half inches. There wasn't much that had to come away um, to be cut away, but that's important that you cut that away. Everything needs to be squared up exactly to six and a half inches so the blocks go together well and you end up with an 18 and a half inch block before you sew it in the quilt. So uh, got that removed, so that part is done. Now what we can simply do is create our nine patch. And you can certainly take this to your sewing machine. I like to lay out each of my blocks next to my sewing machine. And I like to web my blocks together. That helps me to keep everything oriented properly and in the right position. So you can start in the upper left and you'll take your second block and flip it over, bring it to your sewing machine and start sewing a scant quarter of an inch. That's a thread or two less than a quarter of an inch and leave it at your machine, bring the next two blocks, place this one right side over, sew another scant quarter of an inch down here, take the last block, bring it to your machine, and again, sew a scant quarter of an inch. This entire two rows then are columns, they're actually webbed together with that thread. So that's why I call it webbing my block. Then let's pretend this is sewn together, then I come back and I'll grab the last column and I'll lay that over here, so a scant quarter of an inch, and this one and then that one, and I will have the whole block webbed by a thread. Then I simply have to sew these two rows together, and I can just flip, and flip them together and do that. I um, like to press my seams to the dark. You can simply press them open. Some quilters do like to press their seams open. If you do that, please be sure to uh, make a, a shorter stitch length so that nothing pops open as you, when you're quilting. Um, some people like to just do the pinwheel at the corners where the corners will all um, rotate in a pinwheel. And that's totally up to you, whatever you'd like to do. I am simply going to press mine to the dark and I'll show you that when I get this block together. In fact, I can probably show you that on, on this. I pressed everything to the dark and then the last two rows that I sewed together were right here. I pressed those rows away from the center and that's all I did. Here is block B. It's got the nine patch in the center. The medium ones, or the greens, as uh, pictured in the diagram, are making that cross. And then the lights are in the outer four corners. These are all six and a half inch squares, and these are two and a half inch squares. You could certainly pull all of this from your scrap stash, and you could make a beautiful scrappy quilt um, for block B as well. And again, you'll want to square this up to 18 and a half inches. For the pressing on block B, I did in fact for block B uh, take my last two seam allowances that I had pressed and I did press those toward the center because that is where more of the dark fabrics were. So uh, on block A, I pressed the last two seams away from the center. On block B, I pressed my last two seams that I sewed toward the center. And that is how I pressed the block. So it's ready to go. Now, if you are making the wall quilt or the queen quilt, you're going to put your quilt together just like this. So you're going to have block A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A. That's all there is to it. The quilt center is actually another nine patch. There's a lot of nine patches in this. This is probably one of the fastest and easiest patterns in my mystery quilt series that I have done for a quilt center. I don't think I've ever been able to put together a 54 inch square quilt center this quickly. <laughs> it's just a, a great pattern and a real great scrap buster as well. 
So this is ready to go. If you're making the queen size quilt, you're going to take one and a half inch black borders, they're one and a half inches wide, by 54 and a half inches and by 56 and a half inches, and you're going to attach those. The directions, the cutting in, uh, directions and instructions are there. If, however, you're making the wall quilt, then you will not be attaching these black borders at this point. Your borders are just a little bit different. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Both of them have pieced borders, the wall quilt and the queen size quilt, but they're, they're different, so it'll be a lot of fun. So for this next week, you wanna make sure you get your black bees finished, get your quilt center sewn together in that nine patch formation, if you're making the 90 by 90 or the queen size, make sure that you add your dark, or in my case, I used a, a black border. Your, your borders may be a different color. Just follow the instructions here in the PDF, and then we'll be ready to continue with our borders for series number three, or part three of our spring 2024 mystery quilt. Thank you so much for joining me today as I have shown you how to make black bee and how to put together the center of your quilt. And as you can see, it's very simple. You're just row one is black A, B, A. Row two is black B, A, B. And row three is black A, B, A. Just a, a real fun quilt to put together. Now, my quilt is going to be a queen size quilt, so I have added my one and a half inch wide dark borders on, all around it. If you're doing a wall quilt, again, do not add those borders at this point. And I uh, get this quilt, the quilt block B done as well as putting it together, putting the whole center of it together. And I will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining me. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. And again, don't forget to grab the PDF, which is attached in the description box. So until next week, happy quilting.